Hello there. Thought I'd give a little update on how the progress of the classical Revit families is coming along. So I have here my Corinthian capital on screen. And uh, currently the uh, lower leaves here and the mid-range leaves here are fully parametric. The volutes up here are fully parametric. Um, the abacus at the top also is fully parametric as is the drum in the background right there. Uh, what I'm working on right now is the uh, top tier of leaves called the um, colliculi or um, well, it's actually a few words here let me look at my notes so we've got the colliculi and the bud and button uh, that you see there in the middle so um, it turns out that this is actually uh, slightly more challenging than the original leaves were but uh, I'm constructing it in essentially the same way so what I'm going to do is minimize this and take you over here to what I like to affectionately call a sea of reference lines. So if I take this and zoom out just a touch, uh, one of the challenges of working with repeaters in the massing environment, at least that I've discovered, is uh, orientation becomes challenging. Uh, we don't really get uh, too much control over the orientation of the repeater element, so I end up having to build this thing at a strange orientation to begin with and I guess I can just show you that here in the project browser um, reference level does not actually look uh, down or in a plan view it actually uh, is more of a side view and to get a plan view looking down I had to actually create an elevation view um, that's looking down and you can see one of those leaves is larger and the other one is smaller over here now at, at the moment I have this is um, the, the one that you just saw in the capital was sort of my, um, uh, my test or my, uh, my um, uh, clay model, if you want to think of it that way. Now what I'm doing is trying to make that clay model parametric. What you have to do here, the, the essential trick, and let me take you back to the 3D here, is uh, the essential trick that I have to do here is to build this cage of reference lines. So it starts out here. Uh, with this rectangle, which is repeated out here, this second rectangle, and those two are anchored to a series of reference planes back here. Um, you can see that we've got some reference planes here and here and over here and here, and we've got some dimensions and uh, somewhere out here. Um, there are There's a parameter there and there's some other parameters here. So the, the rectangle described by those reference planes is being controlled parametrically uh, width and height and depth basically and that turns out to be all the parameters that we need for this as long as you build this insane cage of reference planes and the real trick here thanks to Zach Crone for this a uh, really big help on this light bulb moment that I got from a conversation with Zach but if you take uh, any of these points here and host them on a reference line they have this parameter over here on the properties palette uh, which controls their position and this is done with a proportional value so in other words this particular point is being measured from the beginning of that line at 0.351484 Now I didn't have to calculate what that value is I simply placed that point where I wanted it to go but the most important thing is when you flex this thing that number is maintained so if the reference line gets twice as long it's still positioning that point at 0.351484 from the end which means that it basically scales proportionally which is huge for what I'm trying to achieve here so by building this cage of reference lines that uh, admittedly is incredibly complex and difficult to work with um, you can get the whole thing to scale parametrically at least that's the theory now uh, I had built all these splines that create the leaves here and I'll just show you with these three right here what it's gonna look like I'm gonna take these uh, three here. I've got this. Uh, well, let me let me do this first. There's uh, this guy back here, which was the original sort of clay model one that I'm calling it. And I deleted the forms and kept the splines because now I want to trace over the splines, but make sure that those points are hosted on these uh, lines, which are being scaled parametrically rather than um, being free in space. Uh, so these original. Uh, splines that I have like for example the last one that I have is right over here or rather it's right there okay there's the last one that I have um, these points here are are driving the curve of that spline 
but they're not attached to anything as of yet. You can see here that this point can move freely anywhere that it likes. So what I'm doing instead is I'm taking these points right here, and they're currently hosted on this line at one of those parametrically driven distances right there. Then I come over here and I do host by intersection and host it to the curve. It warns me that I have identical points, which is fine because after I do all of these, you'll see here, I'll just go ahead and do a couple more. So I'm just ignoring that warning. A couple more. And there's just a few more down here. And you really got to get a good 3D angle to do this. Otherwise, it's very difficult to tell which points you're supposed to be doing and where. So there, there's a lot of time put into here. Then I start deleting extraneous guidelines, like I had this line marking where that point was. I can delete that. Um, I can tab in here and find that old reference line. When uh, if, if we look right now, there are two points in the same spot. You can see here it says two. Okay, That's because of that warning. That warning just told me that. But when I tab in here and I delete this existing curved line, and I know it looks like it's still there. I'm going to address that in a minute. You'll see now that I have just a single point. So that's why I wasn't too worried about that warning about the double points, because I knew when I deleted the original uh, hosted spline that it would remove those extraneous points. Now this blue curve underneath is part of what I'm calling my clay model. So what I did was I just saved a copy of this family and then nested it right back into the one that I'm working on. When I'm all done, my intention is to take this guy and simply delete it. And that would leave me with uh, just these orange lines which are currently model lines. I, I s kept them model lines and turned them orange so I could keep track of things. Unfortunately, we can't color code uh, uh, reference lines, but I will eventually change these to reference lines when I'm all done. But for right now, they're just orange model lines. Um, now I'm gonna undo that for a moment because I wanna keep that, uh, that clay model around a little bit longer. And then I will select these points. Now I found that you've got to do this in pieces here. If you select too many of them, it often gives you a little zigzaggy S shape. And um, so, well, this one I might get away with. But normally what I do is I, I do part of it first. You see how it kind of gives me that little zigzaggy S there. Then you come in, you leave that selected. You come in and you select the last couple points there and then you just click that same spline through points a second time and you can see how it just adds those points to the curve and so now I have that final curve right there and I'm going to scroll down here and make it orange which is just this uh, subcategory here called temp which is an orange line and so that is all of my splines and so then uh, what I wanted to show you here is the the final step is to to take these uh, model lines so let's take this uh, Let's take that clay model there for a moment and just hide it. Okay, I'm not ready to delete it yet, so I'm just going to hide it. That just makes it a lot easier to select these orange lines. I use temporary hide constantly when I'm doing this work. It's, it's impossible to manage a, a, a family this complex without temporary hide. I wish we had permanent hide in the family editor so that I could build working views that I could leave things permanently hidden in and, and do the reveal and all that, but unfortunately that's not available in the, in the family editor. So I have to really rely heavily on temporarily hide. So now I've got those three uh, curves selected and I'll do create form and that gives me my, whoops, I forget that doesn't work so well. Let's use the, uh, we'll use the steering wheel instead. That gives me um, my freeform uh, leaf shape. And you know, I might still want to fine tune it a little bit, but uh, for, for now, this is, this is a pretty good shape. It's gonna go up underneath the, uh, the volume. You saw it in the, uh, in the other one, right? So anyway, um, so those are the, uh, the different ribs that I need to, uh, to create the forms here. Let me just undo that for a minute because the real test here what we really want to see is whether or not this thing is going to flex. So what I usually like to do is flex it first uh, with the ribs before I, you know, before I add the forms. So um, I'll save it, and then I'll go to Family Types. Let me get that on screen there. And I've got some some temporary types in here just to to help me flex. So I'm going to do uh, one and a half times, and let's click Apply. 
Uh, okay, it says I've got identical points in the same place. I'll click OK on that. And uh, let's click OK again and see how we did. All right, not bad. Um, it looks like this, these curves over here are flexing properly. It looks like I missed something over there. So, uh, you know, the chances that it was going to flex perfectly the first try are, uh, you know, always pretty remote. So obviously I've got uh, a few points over here to address. But um, once I clean that up, you can see what it's doing over here. Um, look how nicely these curves over here have maintained their overall shape. Right. So let's see. Let's spin that around. So let's do this. Let me escape. Let me undo this, right? So I can get that those back to where they started from. It's very important that I undo here. Otherwise, I'll lose my original form, and I've got to troubleshoot those points. But before I troubleshoot those points, what I'm going to do is uh, come over here, orbit this around. I'm going to take these three orange lines right here, change those to reference lines, create form, and then let's flex one more time. So you can kind of see uh, what this thing is looking like. Sort of looks like, it almost looks like a little cobra there. Okay, but that's my, my leaf right there. And uh, then we'll go to flex. We know we're going to get that error that we just got a moment ago because the, the leaf on the left is not cooperating, but let's click OK here. Uh, so we'll OK that again. And uh, you can see that my cobra shape is maintained. So it's a ton of work. It took a lot of time to work all this out, but that's the essential process that's involved in creating that parametric leaf form. And then when you nest several of these together, you eventually end up with a Corinthian co uh, column. So uh, hope you enjoyed that. Thanks.